You were good last night. Christ. Riding me like a little cowgirl, you were. Oh, for God's sake. You've had some practice since you've been on that bull in Benidorm, haven't you? Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what's the best way to catch the thief nabbing my Amazon parcels? Someone mm. nicking your parcels? Clearly. And how do I channel my inner Jane Bolton? And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants, are we, William Hansen? the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not Jordan North, radio and television presenter. I'm more court circular, you're more court appointed. What's that mean? <laughs> Is that like get a court fine or something? Sort of, yeah. That was one I came up with on my own. Have you ever been in a court? Have I, yes. Have you? But like as a tourist, not oh. as... not. I haven't been in the dock. Yeah, same. Really? Yeah. Should we have a drink? Okay, yes, let's have a drink. Um, well, do you know who we're going to toast? Do you want to do the D? I'd like to toast Producer Ben, because poor old Producer Ben is not here today. His presence will be greatly missed. He's got the, uh, he's got the old vid, COVID. He's got the old vid. From uh, Porto. Yes. Are they going to lock us down again? Because it seems to be... Well, it does no, seem I don't to be right. longer. No, I hope not. I think we'll be okay. We should be all right. Touch hopefully. wood. Um, but Ben's not here. He's on a screen. We can still see him, unfortunately, but he's there. He's waving. See, and he's got his poorly blanket on. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> oh, look Look at Diego lying next oh. to him. Cute. It's emotional support dog. So, Ben, this is to you. Get well soon. And Cat. I think Cat's okay. Oh, no, she's... she's... Oh, oh, cat's <laughs> Hi. Hi. Is Cat ill too? Oh, oh, cat's ill too. To bed and cat. Have we actually? I'm going to play something in a minute. Wishing anyway. you a speedy recovery. <laughs> mm. um, uh, but we'll we'll do some other business first. Okay, as always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextedmyboss.com, or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextedmyboss, or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time. Promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. And don't forget as well, we've got a bloody book coming out. Do we? Yes. We haven't mentioned it. We've got a book coming out. We've worked, I think, very hard on this. So we would love for you to pre-order it at sexofmyboss.com forward slash book. If you've not yet pre-ordered it, get it in because it's going to maybe sell out. Well, we hope. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Let's manifest Which it. I was just going to say, yes. manifesting is my big thing at the moment. Is it? Yeah, I'm manifesting a lot of things. Yeah. Right. Like what? Just stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. Some new clothes. Apparent, hey, apparently manifesting's dead in at the moment. Is what it? is it, manifesting? It's where you... Well, when I lived in Manchester, Manifest was a club on Canal Street. Um, and it was just like a fest of men. <laughs> But now it's like, it's positive thinking. It's sort of putting something out into the universe and seeing mm. seeing if it rubs off. Uh, show, uh, what does it mean to manifest? To create something or turn something from an idea into reality. Jordan just did a little Google there we go. of that. Do you, talking of new clothes, do you like my top? I do, it's uh, very stripy. It is, I love a striped top and it's beautiful thin cotton. It's really nice. It was a birthday present from producer Ben and Cat. Was it? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Georgia Asda. There's no <laughs> wrong with Georgia Asda, by There's the way. There's nothing wrong with Georgia Asda, but it's not from Georgia Asda. It's from Benetton. Oh. I'll say it. If you want to shop the look, uh, then you get yourself down to Benetton. Oh, look. It's very nice. No, it's nice. Well, I, I like Benetton because they're nice, bright, colourful. Speaking of which, I am, at the moment, mm. in my first half sip of the year. You are. Well, well can of, we... of, of, no, of... The season. Of the season. I love a half sip. Half sip or quarter zip? I would. I have always called them half sips, but mm. actually, technically, it only goes a quarter of the way down. Yeah, put it on for the first time. Yes, I'm actually looking forward to the autumn. Oh, I can't wait. The fall. Although I think when by the time this go, episode goes out, the weather's going to get a bit hotter again. Oh, is it? Ugh. Yeah. I'm. I love the summer. You know, I do. It's my favourite season. Yeah. But I'm ready for autumn now. I know. I want to get a new coat. Yes, you said this last week and oh, the week dear. before. Oh. Yeah. So, is it, are we going to get more hot weather? I th well, it's not going to be quite as hot as it was, but I think the temperatures, humidity is rising. Oh, is it? And all that sort oh. of jazz. Um, talking of uh, talking of jazz, 
Uh, last week, I don't know how that's a very bad segue. Last week, you talked about Freddy and my gin tins, and you did, you, you introduced a new impression of Freddy, and sorry, you introduced a new impression of Freddy. Yeah. Well, Freddy has heard that episode now. Oh, okay. And sent me a voice note to oh. uh, which I have had to get permission to play. What was the voice note again? Well, I'm going to. What was the voice note? No, what was my impression again? Well, it was sort of like a combo, combo of sort of my father or your version of my father and Boris Johnson. Bloody hell, William! I need to work on. Fr- but right, you were about to hear the poshest young man you've ever heard. How old's Freddy? Twenty. Mm-hmm. Right, you're about to hear the poshest young man ever, who's funnily enough been to Benidorm. But anyway, yeah. Jordan's impression of me is fucking awful. Like, I know his imp- his other impressions are, like, bad, but <laughs> I think his one of mine might be the worst to date. To date? Although, I will give him credit. Where credit's due, he did tell the Jintin story in a very good manner. Very funny. Um, the Jintin. Because it's so hard to do stories just a second hand. But, what the fuck? <laughs> but what the fuck? And he did tell the Jin's tin story very well. He's the poshest. He makes you sound like you work in the pits. Yeah. I, to yeah. be fair, listening back to that, I did think actually, I don't think Jordan's impression was that bad. I'm a bit like I'm. I'm a bit like not obsessed, but what's the word when? Can we get him on a bonus? Can we get him on a bonus? No, he's gone back to university. Oh, that's fat. Why's he gone back to uni? Uh, to the southwest. Right, we need to get him on a bonus, because he's hilarious. Mm. 20 years old, he speaks like that. Yeah, but I spoke like that at 20 years old. He's a young version of you. He's yes. your prodigy, isn't he? Prod- prodigy, I think you say. I'm a fire starter. Sorry, I think I got that wrong. <laughs> oh, I did a joke at Leanne and Tom's wedding about the prodigy, <clears throat> did and you? it didn't go down brilliantly well. I did have to run it past them, but I did a joke about their other song. Wow. And the, the pianist was taking requests, and I had already put in my cre- slap. request for slap, da-da-da-da. And it didn't... Well, well, no, half the room found it hysterical. I don't think the older generation found it that funny. What did you say? I've already put in my request for the prodigies, blah, 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 blah. Slap my bitch up? Yep. Well, okay. Um, it's all right, we did that thing the other week, and I don't think any of my jokes landed. Oh, Jordan was so needy. I was just getting... Did those lights just flick? Come on. Chill, you're easily distracted. Come on. Oh, says you. Get your head in the game, Hanson. I got all these needy texts from John. Oh, do you think my jokes are funny? I didn't read oh. the room. No, you did read the room. And I'm sorry to everyone that was there. I would. I we did a little talk for context. We did a talk to, to a group of people. Yeah, we haven't told Stuart's here, big boss today, uh, and, and Ben. Uh, we didn't tell you. I, I don't think I read the room that well. And it was quite, it was with some potential clients. So I'm sorry. Just say media people. It was with some media people, and I don't think I quite got it. I thought you were great. Mm. You made me laugh. Well, yeah. Ben's just said what happened. Oh, can that be heard? I yes. just, no. I just think, I just yeah, don't think the jokes landed that well. Well, I get nervous. I thought you were absolutely fine. Okay. Um, in other news, I'm on a diet. The diet has now started. Why? You don't need to diet. No, I do. You don't. I do. You don't need to diet. It, to be honest, it's all this food I've been having to eat over the summer, filming these videos for TikTok, and then you you know, you know order it, and then you've got to actually bloody eat it, because otherwise it's a waste, and you know, food, you know, waste, etc. cetera. Uh, and just in general, I, bizarrely, most people lose weight in the summer. I always find I put on weight in the summer, because I don't do enough walking, because it's too hot, and I don't want to arrive, you know, clammy. So thus, I take public transport or whatever. Whereas in the in autumn and the spring, where it's sort of bearable, I'm more mobile. Um, so I've decided I'm I'm going to diet. I'm taking much more care with what I eat, and when I do eat, I'm going to eat in luxury. That's going to be my thing. That's going to be how I lose weight. So yesterday, I went and had a salad at Claridge's. Right. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Can I just say, mm. I, I think you look absolutely great. That's fine. In thank all you. the years I've known you, this is the best you've looked. Well, that's very kind. I mean, you're bypassing 2015 when I was incredibly thin. Mm-hmm. But um, was that the time we stopped talking? Yeah, yeah we weren't speaking. Uh, now, yeah, 14, we? 15. Well, yeah. We were speaking, but we, we weren't, were speaking, we weren't but as close. No, were we? not like now. Um, but I think you look great, and you shouldn't diet. A diet so old fashioned just makes small changes, atomic habits. Right? <laughs> 
honest, no, genuinely, you're talking, you're talking to someone here who's been on every bloody diet, God sends, who's, who's done 800 calories a day, for God's sake, which mm. is ridiculous. Remember when I did that? Yes. I lost all that weight. But you, can we, we've talked, we have talked about this in the past. Before I met you, you were larger. Yeah, I was, yeah. My weight's always up and down. Yeah. yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, no, but no, 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 no. Like, you were considerably larger. Yeah, I was. Yeah. When, when you, when I first met you? No, no, no. You showed me photos of when you were like, 17. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was a big lad. Yeah, yeah. you could light up a room yeah. just by moving away from the window. <laughs> <laughs> but it's small changes, trust yes. me. And that's how I'm currently. Yeah. Okay. It's just eat, um, my thing is eat well in the week, right? Be healthy in the week. Although you're coming round to mine for a curry next Tuesday. Yes. And then at the weekend, just life's too short. Don't mm. go on a diet. Don't restrict yourself. Well, I am at the moment. It's good to. Um, it's good to. Cook. I mean, I'm going out for dinner tonight, let's be honest. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> you're right more than cat. Obviously. Well, talking of cats, that's a lovely segue, Jordan, that I was looking for. Um, when I say, by the way, out more than the cat, it means the cat, not Ben's cat. A lot of people have No, but she does go that. out quite a lot, though, so it's fine. Oh, you and her could... Uh, <laughs> you and her uh, are up there. Who goes out on a Wednesday night? Go back to our Benidorm live episode that we put out, and I think the funniest thing that uh, Jump Cut Jack left in was Ben trying to corral the crowd during the interval and he's like guys we need to sit down he was very very piddly anyway what didn't go into the episode but I have I found in the shared Dropbox I found the master files to find this because it was so funny is Cat, Ben's girlfriend who clearly <laughs> realised that Ben's corralling was not working so Cat <laughs> grabs the microphone and then does this and again a bit like your impressions jordan maybe we need to we need to give you more credit she does sound like margaret thatcher this is why i said to jordan we're not having a break we've simply got to sit down <laughs> is that what she's we've simply got to sit she sounds more like baruka salt <laughs> oh she's there cats on the zoom sorry Cat. we've simply got to sit down we've simply got to sit down this lady's not for turning <laughs> no 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 oh that's nice on my headphones god right, bless her that's brilliant anyway how's your week going yeah good uh yeah i've got me new uh half zip on i'm What's your the highlight of your week? What's your thoughts and opinions on VAR? On VAR. VAR. Video. Isn't what? that like a motorway in France? Or no, something? video. What is it? No, that's video assistant referee. Is it? is it like AI referee? Yeah. So it's basically now in the Premier League. Um, it, oh, has it never been a thing? No, they they go to a gallery and it's like loads of referees round screens and they can help the referee on the pitch. Okay. Right. So, so it's like referee by committee. Yeah. Okay. And I've, um, I've always, I always really dislike when football pundits say it's ruining the game, it's ruining the game, that kind of thing, because mm. it's here to say we've got to make the best of it. But it is fucking ruining this game. I'm so <laughs> sorry to swear. At the time of recording, it's the day after. Burnley. Why is it so controversial? Uh, Burnley, because Burnley should have beat Nottingham Forest last night, and we got a goal disallowed. And every, it, it's here to stay, so we, but it needs to get better. Like every time well, we sure score, technology... every time you score now, it used to be a moment of euphoria. Euphoria. Right? Please don't count this up. One for the gays. Sorry. Karen. And I'm like going mad watching the footy. And then every goal now, you're kind of looking over your shoulder waiting for you. Oh, and they got a goal disallowed for handball and it wasn't a handball last night. So I'm, I'm peed off. I'm really peed off. We needed those points. So yeah, that's room my week. At the time of recording, we've got Man United on Saturday. Which I'm going on. You're Eight, going on? Yeah. What, as in playing? Well, no, I'm going to watch it. Oh, I see. In 8, where? 8 p.m. kickoff, which is lethal. Eight, oh. Yeah. It's going to clash with Strictly. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not on this week. Yeah, it is. No, because they, they do the launch show and then they're off for two weeks. Oh, okay. I think, unless they've changed no, it. No, I think it's on this weekend. Oh, is it? Yeah. Anyway, um, so I'm on OVAR, but yeah, it's 8 o'clock kickoff. Well, have to be on half pray, pray for Jordan. Pray for Jordan. Come on, Burnley. How's your week been? Uh, yeah, fine. I mean, the diet, diet's going well, which is nice. Mikey has got uh, a new new bit of apparatus in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's got some sleep tape. Oh, God. Which he puts over his lips to make him breathe more from his nose. Oh, he's so dramatic. So now, 
I mean, it's just the romance in our bedroom is just through the roof. It'll be, you know, good night, darling. I'll turn to him, turn to my left. So, and he's got a piece of basically sellotape stuck over his mouth. Like a corpse. Yes. And I'm not kissing that. What's it for? It's to stop him. It's to help him breathe more through the nose. Now, he doesn't have sleep apnea like you do or you think you do. But it, it's a long list of things I think I have. Yes, but it's you can, if you do breathe through your mouth too much when you sleep, you can get sleep apnea. So it's sort of preventative. Um, but yeah, I'm turning to him. He's got some special pillow that he straps to his leg so he, that goes in between his legs to help him sleep on his side because he's a side sleeper. I mean, Jesus. so am I, but I don't have a pillow. So he's got a pillow in between his legs. He's got tape over his mouth. I mean, just, I mean, welcome to married life. It's like sleeping next to Robocop. Yeah, I know. I mean, what's he going to be like when he's older? So is it like tape as if he's been gagged? No, no. I mean, it's just, it's just a couple of inches over his lips. Why? Well, I don't know. But he, the first night, apparently, obviously his... Sort of Helps me sleep, Joe. I've got sleep apnophobia. So I, I just, I need to sleep. I've been, like, I've been noticed a bit bit tired on, on site. Can't keep up with young lads, so... Just put a bit of tape on mouth and strap a pillow to your leg and you're fast asleep, Joe. Yeah. I feel brand new in morning. I do. It's killing sex life, but, you know, who needs that when you're married? Well, I mean, and it's getting me ready, as I say, for later life. I mean, like, you know, when when he's got tubes coming out of him, when he's like 80, it'll be absolutely fine because I'm used to it with all, right, with all this all this stuff strapped to him when he's 30. Bloody hell. All right. And Wendy keeps hinting at that. What? She said, because the, the dog's not well at the moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, don't, because I'll cry. Mm-hmm. Don't. But he's, he's on his way out and she's following him round with a mop pretty much everywhere he goes. She's just, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's not. I'm not laughing at why. It's just... she's literally having to follow him around with a mop. He just gets ah. up and <laughs> he just leaks everywhere. So she's following him. She's following the dog Frank around with a mop. It's awful, but yeah. yeah. So, so... <laughs> don't every time she rings me. She picks him up other day and he just, yeah, it's everywhere. Oh, so then she said to me, she said, the thing is, it's got me thinking, right, mm-hmm. I'm just about coping with Frank, the dog. Yeah. But I'm not doing this when your dad gets like it. Mm. I'm like, all oh, right. She's like, now, you know, we've not got much saved what with new house. Would you be able to put him up? Because you've got to think about these things. I'm like, freaking hell. Are you be- I don't know if she's half joking or being serious. Yeah. Wow. Well, would you? Put him up. As in what? Let him live with you. Is that what that means? Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do? Follow me dad round with a mop? Oh my God, you would become like Daisy and Onslow having daddy live with you. Oh, I would. Yes. Yeah. I won't call him daddy though. No. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> but yeah. She's worried as well. Al stinks a piss. I suppose it probably does if the dog's peeing everywhere. Do you know what we haven't talked about? Talking of your family. Your baby Lucas and what you did to baby Lucas. Oh God, yeah, don't. Oh, did I message you? Yes, you did message me. You went, William, what am I like? And I won't ruin the punchline. But what did you do to your nephew who's, I don't know, three months? Not even three months. Oh, he was on the little baby mat on the table. And we're all fussing over him. And I've got his little foot. And I bloody spilt a full glass of wine on him. A full <laughs> glass of wine. He's covered. He's absolutely covered. He smelt like he'd been on the weekend. <laughs> Piss me, hunt. <laughs> Oh, and I was, and I was like, I was mortified. I was going, Brad, Sophie, I'm sorry. And we're like dabbing him down, and oh, it was awful. Is he stained? He did have a, he did look a bit rouge the next day. Yeah, yeah. Was it a claret? No, it was a Rioja. Oh, would have been a claret. That would have been fitting. Yeah, it would. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've spilled a full thingy. Also, I've caused. I've got to tell you as well. I'm doing these quizzes on TikTok at the moment. And where you? You've only got three seconds to answer. I was going to tell you this. Your nephew yeah. goes beautifully with a nice bit of beef now. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Poor Lucas, I'm so sorry. Who wrote a famous diary while hiding from the Nazis in Amsterdam? Anne Frank. Yeah, I said Bridget Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I was panicking. So that caused laughs. Was it multiple choice? No, it's, you've got to do it within oh, three see. seconds. Wow. Okay. Sorry again, Brad's and self. For... Did you have a nice time? Oh, it was staying? beautiful. I was, so, I was so lost on Sunday when they went. Mm. It was just the house felt empty without him. It was so good. That's nice. I was just holding him and yeah. At what? Brad's or Lucas? Both. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Nice. Should we go to your Jolly Joke of the Week? Yes, let's. Here's the jingle. If you like a chap that's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat with our Jordan. And if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Cha-cha-cha. No cha-cha-cha. Cost of living crisis, we've got rid of the cha-cha-cha. I asked my friend Sam to sing a song about the iPhone. And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. This is topical. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it's time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. I asked my friend Sam to sing a song about the iPhone. And then Sam sung. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. We've seen those adverts yet? Yes, they're all over your Instagram. Mm -hmm. Lovely. My wife thinks I don't give her enough privacy. At least that's what I said. As, <laughs> at least that's what she said in her diary. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the store to pick up eight cans of Sprite, but when I got home, I realised I'd only picked seven up. <laughs> okay. And? What did the German sausage say to his friend? I don't know. You are the worst. Right. Worst? Yeah. Back to Budweiser Wiser, aren't we? What was Beethoven's favourite snack? Banana. <laughs> Have I done that in tune? No. <laughs> what is it? Da, 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 da. Banana. -na. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, it's quite funny. Yeah. Okay, this is from Lena. Dear William and Jordan, I have a dilemma regarding my friend's recent breakup. I used to live with a letter. Yes, you did. I love my friend dearly, and he had finally found a partner whom we all believe was lovely and supportive. My friend has a very stressful job, and during a particularly difficult time at work, his partner cheated on him with multiple people. A shock to us all. We had gotten to know him quite well, as we all believed this was it, and was going to be a very long and happy relationship. Our dilemma now is how do we go about the post-breakup? The partner is still on our social media and is very friendly to us all, still liking all of our posts and vice versa. He also made the best cocktails ever. Do we keep an amicable, if suspicious, relationship with this man or do we never speak to him again? Many thanks for your advice, Lena. I'd speak to your friend, uh, see what he says, but yes, yeah, probably, probably well, going to have to cut him dead, I think, in, in solidarity with your friend. And he's in the wrong gear, he's been shagging about. Yeah, Lena, who do you want more in your life, your friend or your friend's ex? Mm. And if, if, yeah. If, if your friend says, oh, it's fine, I'm not bothered, but in, I'd, I'd probably delete them, yeah. But also, Lena has helpfully given us a little bit of additional information mm. here in that they split up because they was cheating not just once, not that that makes it any better, but multiple times. Get rid of... The, okay, if he's liking your photos, doesn't mean to say, like, fine, whatever, like, random people can like your photos, just near. Nah. He made best cocktails, fine, go to a bar. Like, I don't... I'd get rid of him. I, I'm actually slightly annoyed, Lena, that actually the more I think about it, that you are even thinking of keeping this person in your life. I'm still friends with some of my mates' exes on Instagram and stuff. I still follow them. But if just because you like someone on Instagram doesn't mean to say they're your friend. Yeah. I mean, I follow you. I follow Ben. It's a bit harsh. I follow Sean Mendes. Doesn't mean to say I'm his friend. Sadly. But Lena... I think it's quite ob obvious. Much to think I've met Shawn Mendes. Yes, I know. I was talking about this with someone the other day. It is f really frustrating that when you met Shawn Mendes, you literally told him how to greet the Queen. What is the point of him meeting me? I mean, obviously we have a king now, so I guess, I mean, it's kind of the same, but he doesn't maybe know that. Very frustrating. This next one is from Anonymous. Hi, William and Jordan. I need some advice regarding how to let someone down gently. A few months ago, I set up a Borrow My Doggy account as I love dogs and my other half won't agree on getting our own yet. We were contacted by someone who has a sweet little pup and lives not too far from us. They asked if we would like to borrow him from time to time and look after him when they go away. I've taken the doggo out a couple of times now, but when I ask if he's about for a walk, the owner suggests they come too. They're lovely people, but I'm not really interested in being their friend and would much prefer to just hang out with their dog. How do I go about asking if I can walk their dog, just the dog and me, without sounding like a bit of a dick? Thanks, Anonymous. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm trying to think of something funny to say here, but I can't. I don't think there's anything you can actually do other than just stop... I don't know how it works on Borrow My Dog. Are you requesting or saying, accepting that you could take their dog? I think you just got to move on. There are other dogs out there. If you've got a mop and a bucket, you can take mine out. <laughs> well, yeah. I was saying that. Wendy will probably want to come with you as well. Yeah. Yeah. She's quite fun, though. Yeah, she's very fun. 
Um, yeah, I think you're going to have to. Anonymous, you are just going to have to go, yeah, oh well, go and yeah. find other dogs. You'll find another dog. Yeah. Mm. Are you um, going to get a dog? Not at this stage of life. No. No. Maybe like we we haven't ruled it out. You'd get a Labrador, wouldn't you? Go a Labrador? Retriever. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. What would you get? A corgi. Would you get a corgi? Yes. What about those ones to put in your little handbag that you got from France? My... <laughs> Go on, what's the brand? I'm not mentioning the brand because I'm not you. I have never heard of the brand. And everywhere we go, people just come up to William and like, oh my God, is that a... What's it called? Georgia Asda bag. A Georgia Asda bag. Oh, I've just realised that's Georgia Asda. I thought it was Georgia Dasta. <laughs> I thought that was the brand. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> what is, Can uh, someone put new batteries in Jordan, please? Um, yeah, I would... No, I'm not going to get a little handbag dog. Okay. No, a corgi. Two corgis. Sorry. I've said this before. Two corgis. One called Princess Margaret. Another, yeah, called, another called group Pete, Captain Peter Townsend. Group pa- Captain Peter Townsend. They can be together at last. Okay. They're on the rise, corgis. They are. Yeah, I, seen, I see corgis everywhere. I've seen some on the One Show about it. Really? Yeah. Was it the One Show? Yeah, BT about it. Nice. Been the One Show, or BBC Breakfast. One of the two. Oh, welcome to your thirties. <laughs> <laughs> Literally hearing an half zip talking about the One Show. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't asked you to present that yet. Mm. Put it this way. Oh, Roman's got it. Yeah, that's yeah, just gonna say. It's <laughs> <laughs> just gonna say. If I ain't got a job, it's usually because Roman Kent's got it. Yeah. He's very good. He is actually yeah. really good. We had a good laugh. Can we, at... can we chat about having him on in case Jordan's not available? As like a backup. I am here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is from Rupert. He's actually a really nice guy. You know, you get on with him. He's very funny. Yeah. Uh, dear sexted boys, I have an etiquette question that always puts me on the spot. I do not usually find any of life's situations awkward apart from one. When you're with a friend and you bump into someone you clearly recognise but you've forgotten their name, how do you introduce your friend as you can't remember their name? Do you awkwardly say you've forgotten their name or wait and hope they introduce themselves to your friend? I find this one so awkward. Best wishes, Rupert. That's sort of the problem that only someone called Rupert would have. Rupert. Rupert Rupert the the bear. bear. Um, This is a nice one. I've written about this in my book. Um in one of my uh, books that I've done previously before the sexted one, but I think it's possibly it's in ours as well, you can do what I call the Noel Coward trick, which is supposedly when, if let's say you and I were chatting, Jordan, I've forgotten your name, Ben comes over, I know Ben's name, I go, oh, Ben, uh, so lovely to see you. Ben, please may I introduce, and then I say to you, so sorry, I've forgotten your name, and you say... Jordan. No, Jordan, I know your first name, I meant your last name. North. Jordan North, may I introduce Ben Cartwright. So that's what you can do. No, I, I, I've got a great trick for this, Rupert. So say Ben come up mm. to you, yes, and I didn't know your name. Yes, and I think this is a really good one. I always, I would say to you, "Oh, this is my friend Ben," and then Ben would say, "Hi, I'm Ben," and you'd say, "I'm William," and I'd go, "Oh, sorry, William, we've not met before." Right. Yes, you could do that's that. That's my yes. trick. I do it all the time. So I'll go, "Oh, this is uh, Adam." Mm-hmm. who's working on the show today mm-hmm. Adam this is William and then Adam would say oh no I wouldn't um. <laughs> and this is why one of us no, does 30 second no. links and the other one does <laughs> it, they're not train. 30 second links how not long, on heart how long are they I don't know as long as a piece of string okay yeah but um, that's how I do it Yes, you, you can do that. You go, oh, this is this is my friend Ben, and hope they introduce mm. each other. If you need to be honest, though, and sometimes you do have to be honest and sort of go, I've forgotten your name. Don't say, sorry, I've forgotten your name. Say, please remind me of your name. And then it's a bit softer. Alongside my other ailments of being deaf in one ear, mm-hmm. dyslexic, dyspraxic. ADHD. Po- un, you know. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one we came up with today? Sleep apnea phobia. Sleep apnea. Yeah, I sleep apnea. I, uh, claustrophobic, yeah. uh, scared of snakes, yeah, yeah bone idle. Excuse me, no. Um, uh, um, you tell me off, but you can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, many, many other ones. I do think I have facial blindness. Facial blindness. What's it called? Where you just can't. I was at a wedding recently, and I felt so rude. And I went, "Oh, hi, I'm Jordan." Mm. She's like. I'm so sorry, but we've met like four or five times now. And I'm like, I am so sorry. It's much nicer to say to people, um, so lovely to see you. Because yeah, whether you've met them or not, see you. Because it is nice oh, so to bad. see them. 
but it also doesn't sort of infer that you haven't met them before. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would say. Should we do one more? Uh, yes, all right, one more. This is from... Or oh, two more. How many have we got? Uh, got three more. Oh, oh, right, okay, let's do it. This is from Charlotte. Hello, William Jordan and EPB. An ex and I mutually decided to break up just over a year ago, but she still hasn't returned any of my belongings. Lesbian. Uh, I gave her her stuff back within about a month and she said that she would obviously do the same. We live about an eight-hour drive apart, so I can't collect the items in person. Mm. But when I offered to pay to have it posted, she said that she didn't want to because my things were fragile. I think Doc Martin's are fairly sturdy. It's now been a year, so I don't know if I can keep asking because while things aren't unpleasant between us, we aren't particularly friends anymore. I last messaged her about it about four or five months ago, and I'm beginning to think that she may have either binned or sold my stuff. But there were also sentimental items like souvenirs from holidays from before we met, or expensive things like my record collection, lots of Katie Lang, most of which were artists she didn't like, so we have no interest in keeping. The question is, can I keep chasing her up about it, or do I have to let it go? Any advice would be much appreciated, and keep up the good work. Charlotte, I would... um... One more call. This has got to be a phone call or a voice note. And if you don't hear back from him, then cut your losses. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's it's tough. Or turn up. You could, eight hours away. It's a 16 hour drive. Where does she live? The or bloody f- Shetland. Islands. Yeah. Or fly. Or I know I get there. But you, if you want to get your stuff back, and I appreciate it would be really nice of your ex to actually sort of send and cover. You the can costs. reach me by railway across the. On a freeway, I don't care how you get here. Just get here if you care. Nice. Um, yeah, you need to go What's and make a the trail effort. boat. A trail boat. You can reach me by trail boat. I don't know, Johnny. I don't know the song. Carry on. Um, but yeah, I would. I would turn up and go and get them yourself. If if the mountain won't go to Mohammed, Mohammed goes to the mountain. That's what I would suggest in this instance, Charlotte. And actually, message to any exes out there if you do have possessions of your partners or your ex-partners just get it back to them they will get your stuff back to you or should you get their stuff back to them it's a two-way street however messy it is keeping it is called stealing it's sailboat i don't know why i've said say i've always said it's trailboat you can reach me by sailboat climb a tree and swing rope to rope and who, who sings this song Ale- what alita adams. adams who's caught is that jacket thanks Stuart. Wait, this is a beautiful song. I don't need to hit, don't play it because we'll have to pay for it. Take a sled and slide down the slope into these arms of mine. You can jump into a speedy colt. What's a speedy colt? Across the border in a blaze of hope. I don't care how you get here. Just get here if you can. Right. Oh, that's a beautiful song. Oh, so moved. You can reach me back. This is from Katie and the rest of the hen party. Dear Jordan, William and EPB, shout out to Diego and Mikey. I'm currently at my hen party in good old Benidorm. I'm so sorry. And all of us are long-term listeners and big fans. My dilemma is this. After paying a large amount of money for my wedding to ensure everyone has a good time, it occurred to me, do I have to pay for my own drinks at my own wedding after paying for everyone else to a sit-down meal and a dance? Or should my guests buy me drinks all night? And if I do have to buy my own drinks, where do I keep my bank card as my wedding dress does not have pockets? Kind regards, Katie and the rest of the hen party. Oh, Katie, I thought you were talking about the hen party. First of all, you should not be buying your own drinks on your hen party. And I believe, if if possible, it is um, times are pretty hard at the moment. If possible, you're going on a stag or hen do, you should all chip in for the stag. Yes, at least for the flights or the hotel, if possible. Mm. That's not the case at the moment because people like it is. It well, is yeah, but also shit. if you can't afford the to to pay for the stag or you can't afford to go on a stag or hen do, don't go. Yeah, yeah, don't feel pressured into going. You don't need to. Have I one. know. Yeah, like that's a good point. William. It's not a human right. Fair play. Uh, but yeah, no, um, I'm sorry, but no, you should not be buying your own drinks at a wedding. No. If you're, you, somebody should be offering it. And if you go to the, I would politely go to the bar and then wait, but a, a, a groom and bride or a bride and a bride or a groom and a groom should not be buying their own drinks at a wedding. No. If you need to, in terms of the where just keep your bank card, Katie, I mean, I think of a couple of suggestions, but they're not appropriate. Uh, I would go in advance to the bar and say, can I set up a tab? I'm the bride. Here's my card. And do it that way. Even if it's just the odd thing that you want or that you want to buy someone else a drink. Maybe you want to buy the mother of the part of your partner, for example. Getting married, you want to buy them a drink, for example. Uh, then do it that way. So a bit of forward planning. 
but yes you can't you can't sort of have a, a special pocket inserted into your dress mm. final uh, one how, what, how many weddings have you got I've, I've got two more this year have you got two more this yeah. year later on Christmassy weddings I've not got any but I've got loads next year actually my friend Adam he's uh, I'm I'm the celebrant and he said to me when he asked me to be it he What's said celebrant like the officiator Oh, you married like Joey and friends. Yeah, and he said, Adrian and I uh, think you'd be great because obviously we've come to see you on the Sexted shows and we think you'd be great working the crowd. It's like, I can't critique what the mother of the bride is wearing. I can't reduce her to tears. I can't do all of that patter. What are you going to do? Have a game of bloody... <laughs> Never, <laughs> Never <I> ever. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they'd love that. But I'm not sure the rest of the, the congregation would. Mm. Anyway, but I love the fact they, you know... Maybe I, maybe I could hire myself out to be celebrants for Gene Divas next year. I will do their wedding. Is it English man is struggling? No, English man is not struggling at all. I just thought I could diversify. Okay. Available for a fee, for charity, like my cameos. Uh, final one. This is. Are you still doing your cameos? Yes, from time to time. Is it? There's a. It's a lot. You get a lot of them. Um, so I limit, I limit my windows of availability. Oh. But I've raised about six thousand pounds for classes. Oh, and fair people. play! Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, that's really good. Bless so, you. It's money I could have put in my own pocket, but I have chosen to donate. All right, we get it. You're doing it bloody charity. Christ, I might be at a table across from Bob Geldof. Bloody hell! <laughs> Sorry, Bob, you've done great stuff for charity. Has he raised six thousand pounds though? Yeah, in oh, a, he? he probably raises that before he gets out of bed every morning. Oh, does he? He's a good bloke. Is he? Is he? Good old Bob. Uh, Robert. Uh, this is from Anonymous. Dear William and Jordan, I wanted to share my tale of trepidation from when I first visited my husband's parents' place in the US. After a very long journey, everything was going swimmingly, and it seemed that my future in-laws liked me. Delighted by this, I retired to bed quite early, content with how things had gone. The following morning, I woke up from a long sleep to find my boyfriend absent from the bed. Assuming that I had overslept and been rude to my gracious hosts, I hurried downstairs without my glasses. There I found my boyfriend in the kitchen making coffee with no one else around. Relieved that I hadn't missed anything significant or given the impression of being a slobby late riser, I let out a sigh and made a comment about his bedroom performance the previous night while playing, while playfully grabbing a rather large handful of his bottom. Oh, God. To my horror, I heard a gasp and a distinctive O oh, that did not belong to my boyfriend. Turning around, turning around was his father, whom I had only met the night before, looking mortified. Needless to say, I wanted the ground to swallow me up. Not only had I brought up intimate matters with my boyfriend's conservative pa father, but I had also grabbed his behind in a rather embarrassing blunder. Oh, God. I fled like a coward to the downstairs bathroom to collect myself, only to discover that my boyfriend right, was in the middle of his morning poo. I wasn't quite sure how to explain that I had just mistakenly grabbed his father's bottom or mentioned some things that I would rather not want his family Jesus, to know. Jesus, how blind are you? <laughs> Bloody hell. But somehow, after some stutters... Who's this from, Mr Magoo? <laughs> some stutters and stumbles and tears, I managed to get it out. <laughs> Your boyfriend probably did as well. <laughs> he, laughed, he laughed and assured me that while he understood my embarrassment, everything would be all right. This provided some reassurance, but even after eight years of marriage and a baby, the incident is still brought up and laughed about by everyone in the family. I'd hoped to adopt the British stiff upper lip approach, pretend it never happened and move on. However, it appears that Americans prefer to talk about feelings and bring up things we should all be better off forgetting. This fortunate event, this unfortunate event has been referenced in wedding day speeches every Christmas and pretty much every family event you can imagine. Although I play along with the jokes, it makes me cringe deeply. Do you have any advice on how to make this less awkward or how to stop the embarrassment from resurfacing? Kind regards, Anonymous. I, I'd, um, I'd speak to your boyfriend and just say... Or husband now. Husband now and just say, can, um, can you tell your family that, to stop bringing it up? It's, it was years ago. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a bit mortifying. But it's very funny. It's oh. very funny. Our, um, Joanne did this. Right. You know, Joanne. Our Lee. Yeah, he yeah. goes out with our Lee. Our Joanne. Now, from behind. Can I just ask a quick question for the nor Northern Etiquette? Mm -hmm. Our Lee, mm -hmm. that's obviously the relation. Yeah. Whoever the relation marries or is in a relation, do they become our as well? Or are they just Joanne? Do you say our Joanne? Or is that not no, because I she's not your... No, I don't say your... our Joanne. And it's weird as well because there's a load. We, we need to go into this. So, uh, our Lee will say to me... Hmm. 
I seen your Brad's at the weekend, not our Brad's, because mm. technically he's my. Do you get what I mean? Even yeah. though, so if Lee was talking, I wasn't there, he'd say our Brad's, but because yeah. he's my brother, he'd say your. It's, it's very complicated. Anyway, our Lee. If only you could just use people's names. And my dad are about the same height. Yeah. And they've got bald heads. Right. And Joanne come into the pub once and she went up to what she thought was Lee behind the bar mm. and slapped his ass. I said, right. hiya. And it, my dad turned around. <laughs> it was very funny. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sure you It's, it's easily done. It's easily done. Um, I, I would actually say, look, I mean, it's it, anonymous. It's good that they're laughing about it. That's good. Okay. Um, I would just say to all of them, guys, look, it was 10 years ago. Shall we find some new material, please? Yeah. I think I would start with that approach. I'd I speak to your husband first, but... I, no, I'd just go straight to the source. I'd say to all of them, guys, yeah, it was very funny, but come on, it's it's not funny 10 years later. Let's let's find some other stories. Can you imagine if Mikey did that in front of your mum and dad? Mm. Has he? What, slapped my bottom? Yeah. No. Or said, hey, you were good last night. Christ. No, I'm still waiting for that. Oh, he's... Riding me like a little cowgirl you were. Oh, for God's sake. Can you imagine if your mum and dad heard that? I'm glad you, you've had some practice since you've been on that bull in Benidorm, haven't you? Oh, morning, Sarah. Morning, Brian. Right, get on with it. Okay. Do your ending. Right. Sorry, I've just done something there and William's asked for it to be cut. And it was very, very funny. It was not very funny. I want that to go on record. It was very funny, but William's just asked it to be cut. I'm going to ask for you to be cut. Always remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. Watch us on YouTube on Mondays and share with us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. What? Wow. Just slow down. This has gone on forever and I need to wait. At Sex and My Boss. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self steel envelopes. The address is on the website at sexmyboss.com. We'll see you on Tuesday. Friday. See you on Friday. Bye.